Yes, darling. Please turn the lights on. It is definitely time to go over some mail that's been sent my way. Also, let's quickly chat about some philatelic news because there's a lot going on in this hobby. Also, apparently there's a new season of exploring stamps. So let's discuss that and so much more on this episode of Hashtag Philately. So some quick philatelic news. It seems that stamp shows are beginning to happen again in person. Uh, there's three big ones that everyone's excited about, namely Westpex taking place in San Francisco uh, this July, may have already happened by the time I've edited this video, as well as the Great American Stamp Show taking place in Chicago in August, and Stampex taking place, of course, in London uh, in September. If you feel comfortable going to a stamp show such as that, definitely check them out or maybe there's a stamp show in your town or area that you can definitely visit and get back into the spirit of celebrating philately in person again. I don't know if I'm going to a stamp show. Uh, if any, it might be Stampex, but I'll let you know. I'll keep you up to date on social media, on Twitter and Instagram. Of course, Stampex could be a bit of a challenge for me because of restrictions with transatlantic flying at the moment uh, due to COVID, but I'll keep you in the loop and let you know because if you are attending, I'd love to meet you in person. Also in the news, yes, I got a lot of messages from you in regards to the record sale price of the ball cover. This was big news in the philatelic space and was a surprise to everyone. The ball cover, which is really simple in appearance with an orange red Mauritius post office stamp, is one of three known covers today that contained invitations to a ball hosted by the governor's wife in Mauritius. And of course, this prompted the need for stamps. I did an episode in the very early days of the Exploring Stamps channel about the Blue Mauritius Post Office. I'll link that in the video description so you can check it out. But there are three covers that have these famous Mauritius Post Office stamps, and they are celebrity covers today. The ball cover is one of those three covers, along with the Bombay cover and the Bordeaux cover both of which were named after the locations they were sent to. And the Bordeaux cover is one of those ultimate rarities that is extremely sought after and desired in the philatelic space. But the auction for the ball cover just took place on June 26, and after hammer price and buyer's premium was sold for an astonishing $11.94 million. This is a huge deal in the philatelic space for a number of reasons. Firstly, this is the first time any philatelic item has broken the $10 million mark. Also, it is now the most expensive philatelic item in the world, surpassing the Magenta's recent sale price, as well as its record price back in 2014. And you can argue that the orange red Mauritius post office stamp is the most expensive stamp in the world. Granted, it's not a standalone stamp such as the one cent Magenta, but in order to acquire it, to purchase this stamp, you would have to spend up to $12 million. So you could say that it is the most expensive stamp in the world. It's the new record. Even the punk philatelist tweeted shortly after the event, bow down to your new queen, as the news broke, as Queen Victoria's image on a stamp now took the throne of the most expensive philatelic item in the world. So the magenta is now yesterday's news, funny enough, which is a surprise to everyone because we didn't anticipate this happening, especially so shortly after the one set magenta's disappointing auction. Now I'll place a number of links in the video description, uh, pointing to news that you can read up more about this record breaking sale. I did post something a few weeks before the auction asking for a generous person to pick up the ball cover for me and send it my way. So maybe that happened. I'll just I'll just uh, keep checking my PO box. While I'm talking about social media, are any of you on TikTok? Now, this is a platform that's extremely popular at the moment and is about sharing videos, short clips, and adding music to them and so on. If you are on TikTok, check out two accounts, Philata Lovely and Art Stamp. Suzanne has gone onto the platform recently and both Flatter Lovely and Art Stamp are sharing some really fun things. 
I've just gone onto the platform. I'm trying to figure it out. I've only posted one thing so far. So please don't follow me actually. I'm still figuring this out. I don't know what I'm doing. But follow Philata Lovely and Art Stamp. I'm actually learning quite a bit from them in their short little video clip. So uh, it's a lot of fun. And if you're on TikTok and have a stamp account or would like to start a stamp account, please let us know so that we can follow you as well. There seems to be quite a demand for stamp related content. People are following and enjoying uh, Philata Lovely and Suzanne's content. Definitely get started. And finally, let's discuss some channel news in regards to this new season that was announced on social media. Shortly after that announcement, I posted the first video of season four and I thoroughly enjoyed creating it as well as visiting Egypt. You know, I love learning about stamps in this way and that's why I started the season again. Of course, it's been almost a year since we ended season three and we've learned a lot in that time, but I wanted to go ahead and do another season where I slowly learn about these stamps. This season is going to take a while. Uh, I'm not going to rush it. It's going to be ongoing with hashtag philately and I hope that all of you enjoy it as well. Before the episode, I really knew nothing about Egyptian stamps. So it is quite a process. I learn well along with you as well as explore my own collection and go out and purchase new stamps and so on. It's a really fun experience. Of course, there's the filming aspect as well as the editing. So there's a lot of work behind it. Uh, but as I mentioned, I enjoy it and I'm looking forward to seeing where this season takes us. One thing I'll just mention about the filming of this episode is that while I was in Egypt, there was a bit of a casualty with some stamps. So lesson learned, don't fly your drones too close to stamps, although that's probably the first time that tip has been shared with other philatelists. And I'm probably most upset about the Queen Elizabeth II $2 issue from Hong Kong that got a bit of a slice. It's a dangerous hobby and there's always risk for casualties. Perhaps I should work on the skills of my drone pilot. Hey. One thing that I also want to point out is learning about the postmarked city of Sawakin. It took me hours to figure out what city it was based on the letters that I had. And of course, I was looking in Egypt for the city, yet it was actually in Sudan. But I posted an image of the stamp after I had figured it out on Instagram. And within minutes, somebody quickly called out that it's from the city of Sawakin in Sudan. And that someone is Juan Valerino. I probably could have saved hours of my research time had I posted the picture earlier. Now, Juan is a travel writer and blogger and has literally hitchhiked through 90 plus countries while showcasing human hospitality in some of the most fascinating and misunderstood places in the world. He's written books, appeared on mainstream media, and of course, he is a stamp collector. He has even taken part in some extreme philately, which is really cool. So when he quickly identified Sawakin from the postmark, I was impressed but not surprised to find out that Juan has actually visited Sawakin and it is a beyond fascinating place to explore. It was an old Ottoman city port in a gorgeous location but was left to ruins when Port Sudan began to take over its role as Sudan's Red Sea port. This of course put me in a rabbit hole where I was learning about the city in the height of its existence with beautiful buildings and coral walls. It was prosperous, rich and royalty had lived there. A medieval luxury city but then eventually became a slave trading port and then completely not needed and eventually abandoned to fall into ruins with time. So as I said, Juan visited this place and had explored these ruins and shared with me some photos. He had even asked the locals to point out where the location was of the old post office, which was just a pile of rocks. But the pictures that he sent me are of an incredible lost city that I never knew about until I tried to figure out a postmark on a stamp. This is what excites me about having an online philatelic community. There's so much to learn from each other. You never know who's been where or who knows what. And this also points out that you don't need an expensive stamp or an expensive collection to really enjoy and learn from the hobby. That was a grubby old stamp at the bottom of my box. Now Juan also shared with me some great images of his stamp collection, which he has desert postman stamps from Sudan. This is a famous desert postman, of course, 
which I mentioned the design was issued for 50 years. Of course, if you have a sharp eye, you'll notice that he has a few with the Sauerkin postmark. Aha! This is just further proof that he's a flat list along with being a travel writer and blogger. And I know for a fact that stamps have played a role in inspiring some of his travel experiences. One of which is this desert postman stamp. While he was in Sudan, he almost purchased a camel to be part of his journey because of this stamp. But unfortunately, the camel was a bit too unfit to travel with, and so he wasn't able to do that. But he did ask several of the elders that he came across during his journey through Sudan about the days of the desert postman, and they recall it. They recall the postman traveling by camel delivering mail, which is pretty cool. So if you're on social, definitely follow Juan. I'll put links to his social media as well as his books in the video description. Thank you very much for sharing that with us, Juan. And I feel like we should do this again. Feature a philatelist that's part of this community and their connection to the hobby. Just a thought. Expectations for season four. So Laura is wanting to say something. So I just want to make clear that season four is going to be a slower production and way, way, way cheaper. When you say cheaper, you mean less travel. I mean no travel, and I mean no buying expensive stamps. That's, uh, you're not selling it to the viewers. And that's not fair, because what if it's real research? What if I get a tropical island? No. Oh. The season sounds terrible. I should get you to host an episode. No. Okay. time and I'm always excited to go through my mail but this time I got some flip-flops if you haven't already noticed. Uh, a few episodes ago I had asked you all to either send me flip-flops or coconuts or other strange objects through the mail because I was constantly getting emails about various objects that you should be allowed to send in the mail by just plopping a stamp on it. Well here we go. This is the first flip-flop that arrived at my P.O. box. It fits perfectly in my P.O. box by the way and this was sent from Slater in North Carolina. Slater used masking tape to wrap around the flip-flop so that uh, the address can be written on and uh, probably so that the stamps can adhere to the flip-flop. And this was sent with four forever stamps. However, I believe this was not enough to get through the postal service because you need to pay for a non-machinable item. It's a little more than what a regular letter through the mail system would cost. And while there are four forever stamps, that's totaling $2.20, on the back, it looks like the Postal Service also had asked for an additional $1.95 to cover the cost of sending this non-machinable item. I noticed that it is a used flip-flop based on the wear on the tread. So thank you Slater in North Carolina. This is of course my first flip-flop that made it through the mail and it was a success. Produced for the right foot of course, worn and I believe a US men's size 7. It's not the only ones that have arrived. I actually got a pair sent to me from South Carolina. So the Carolinas clearly have the ability to send flip-flops through the mail. This one is interesting because the pair is inside an ambulance cover. And we've discussed ambulance covers in the past. An ambulance cover in this case may have been used because the postal service was irritated when they had two flip-flops making their way through the mail going to the same address. Or maybe they actually thought that the flip-flops were connected in some way and at some point during its journey through the postal system someone may have gone ahead and placed them in the ambulance cover thinking that something ripped them apart. I know that they must have been sent separately because this was sent by Banu who wrote on each one I hope L1 makes it to you and then on another one I hope R1 makes it to you. And they are decorated with a number of worldwide stamps including Nicaragua, I see Cuba, I know there's Romania and some old US stamps, but the stamps that were actually used to send them were forever stamps, and there were only three forever stamps on each flip-flop. So what is that? That's $1.65. So I think that these somehow made it through the postal service without the correct postage. Because as we saw, Slater's flip-flop from North Carolina required $4 and change 
to get through as a non-machinable item. Or maybe by bundling them together, it got it a lot closer to the actual cost of sending a non-machinable item such as this through the mail. If you think about it, the two sets of stamps together equal about $3.30. So thank you, Bano. That's number two and three that have successfully arrived at my uh, P.O. box. These are U.S. men's size 9 or 10, and they both right and left feet unused, I think. Yep, unused. Speaking about weird items, the second thing I want to show you is actually something that came in an envelope like this. And when I opened it up, it was a potato. Uh, <laughs> on it, there's a message that says, I didn't want to mail a coconut. And it was sent by Bob from Bob Collects Stamps. Bob has a YouTube channel as well as a podcast and a blog. And of course, is on all the socials. So I will put his social media all in the video description along with the link to his YouTube channel and his blog and podcast. Now, what's interesting about this potato is that I think it was supposed to be sent in the mail with stamps placed directly on it and not inside an envelope because this is a service. I actually see on the back here they wrote at mail a spud. So mail a spud is a service in the US that I guess you could go ahead and mail a friend a potato, whether it's a gag or they genuinely need a potato. I went onto their website and it looks like the stamps actually get applied to the potato. So I don't know, maybe there's a, a rule out there that you can't do that anymore, or maybe mail a spud just didn't have some real stamps because now it's a barcode. Or maybe because a tracking number was requested because this has a tracking number on it. And so that would be pretty difficult to apply to the potato. Anyway, it was a wonderful surprise to get a potato alongside a used flip-flop in my PO box. So thank you very much, Bob. And I plan on eating your mail probably tonight. I'm going to bake it, add some butter, sour cream and chives, which I'm looking forward to. I think that's it for weird items, but I've still got quite a few items to look at. So the third item is actually sent from Malta. I got this wonderful aerogram with a beautiful stamp featuring an English setter and a perfect postmark showing that this was sent from the Malta Postal Museum in Valletta. This is from Matthew who writes that he's been following the YouTube videos for a couple months and finds them really interesting. He collects worldwide stamps with a focus on Malta and the British Commonwealth. He has been a collector since his father introduced him to the hobby in his childhood, and in recent years, he's been focusing more on revenue stamps. He writes that what he finds interesting about revenue stamps is that it is an area where you can still make new discoveries and find rare, possibly even unique items without breaking the bank. And so he sent me a number of beautiful revenue stamps that I wanna show you. Check these out. These are all from Malta and he writes that the small turquoise one is an excise stamp for cigarettes. The pink ones are for wine and the yellow green ones are for alcohol. They were issued in 2019 and they're likely to be hard to come by in the future because they were meant to be torn up after use. Now while these stamps don't look like your traditional postage stamps, they are still revenue stamps. They are proof of an excise tax being paid. And an excise tax is specific for a good or item, such as alcohol, cigarettes, and gasoline, and so on. He also sent a few of the older revenues from 1899, 1906, and 1926. You can see the overprinted revenue on these three stamps. And then this one is specifically, or was specifically issued as a revenue stamp, as you can see the word revenue for one penny. They were all canceled with pen, a couple with actual legit signatures. These are stunning examples of revenue stamps. And revenue stamps are indeed a part of philately. It's a branch of philately. And I know that I've been challenged with that in my previous video about the 1786 embossed revenue stamp from Britain. But it's a part of philately. It was there before the first postage stamp. The revenue stamps were being collected long before postage stamps even made a scene. And they definitely set the standard for what a postage stamp could look like 
and how it could be used. And it is a fascinating aspect of philately. So thank you, Matthew. These are phenomenal. Uh, I'm very excited to add them to my collection. I already forgot what number we're on. I think it's number four, but this one is from Sarah in Canada. And it looks like Canada Post struck with the pen on these four stamps, but no worries about that because Sarah sent some amazing items. Sarah writes to me saying that she hopes that Laura and I are doing well and getting to enjoy the wonderful warm weather. We are, thank you Sarah. And she also writes that she is sending along a few of her favorite stamps that Canada Post has put out this year. The Blue Nose. I know that your favorite Canadian stamp is the famous 1929 Blue Nose. What gave you that idea? I mean, it's, it's accurate. I must have dropped a clue or two somewhere. I think that the design of these stamps is so beautiful and I love how they included the painting that inspired the design. I really appreciate all the hard work, time and resources you put into the channel. I have loved learning and exploring stamps with you and your community. Oh, and she just bought her first set of Machens from Suzanne from Art Stamped after she fell in love with them on that episode. I'm really glad to hear from you, Sarah. I know that you recently joined the channel and you've been commenting your way through the videos and I've enjoyed reading those comments and watching you progress through the various seasons and other videos. It's been uh, a lot of fun. The Blue Nose was a schooner or a sailing vessel. It was launched from Nova Scotia in 1921, a hundred years ago, and it was designed to excel at fishing and racing, which it won numerous trophies. And it really became an icon in Canada in which the famous 1929 Blue Nose stamp was issued. I have one of them and it is a must have if you're into Canadian stamps or stamps with boats on them. The Blue Nose stamp is considered to be one of the most beautiful stamps that not only Canada has issued, but has ever been issued worldwide. And it's stunning in any condition you get mint or used. It also starred in a leading role in another Canadian classic, which was Tommy Tricker and the Stamp Traveler, a movie from 1988. And this movie was centered around traveling through stamps, but the Blue Nose was a main part of the storyline for that movie. And I know for a fact that there are many people out there that were inspired to start collecting stamps because of that movie. And I've met some of these people. Hey, look, six men Blue Noses. Perfect condition. Hold, hold it, hold it, look. Another one. I'm sure there's a full version of the video somewhere out there. I'll leave a link in the video description for you to watch it after you finish watching this video, of course. Sarah, these are stunning. Thank you for sending them my way. Canada continues to issue beautiful stamps and impress me. Uh, so I'm looking forward to adding these to my collection with my Blue Nose 1929 stamp. All right, next one is from the Netherlands. This one was sent to me by Don, who writes to me saying that he really appreciates the channel and work that I put into it. Generally feels like I enjoy the hobby of stamp collecting that makes the videos so much better. Thank you, Don. This brings me to what I have sent you. These are stamps issued by the company Sand. For a while here in the Netherlands, we had two postal services who competed with each other. This went on for quite some time until Post Nederland bought out Sand in 2019 and shut the company down, delivering all the mail through the Post NL network. This is interesting because I've seen these stamps before. I just didn't know that they were not part of the postal service in the Netherlands. And you can see the name of the company very clearly on each of these S-A-N-D-D. -D. I think that's Sand or Sand. These four were issued clearly during the Christmas season. And um, I'm assuming that 50 is 50 or it's 50 cents and 60 must be 60. Just a guess. We still have some smaller postal companies here that compete with Post NL, but they are very small and only deliver in specific regions, with the rest of their mail being delivered through Post NL. I try to collect these, which isn't always easy, but a lot of fun. I also collect postcards and the stamps are one of the main aspects I enjoy about it. 
I wish you the very best. Keep up the amazing work and take care. Thank you, Don. I just learned something new from these. And I guess everyone else out there watching, now you know about this second company that operated in the Netherlands known as Sand. Maybe you too will find or come across some of these stamps. Look at this. This is from Pakistan and has some insulin stamps that were clearly just issued, of course, for the 100th anniversary of insulin. And we saw that in the last mail episode I did where I got those insulin stamps from Canada. Well, Pakistan has clearly issued these as well, celebrating Dr. Frederick Banting and Charles Best's discovery of insulin. And you can see an image of the Toronto Daily Star in the background. Uh, with the headline, Toronto Doctors on Track of Diabetes Cure. What I didn't know, and this is another little fun fact I just learned from Stamps, is that they actually sold the patent for just one dollar, which is fascinating because 100 years later, insulin is still incredibly expensive. These are large, stunning stamps that feature two ports that celebrate the 70th anniversary establishment of a diplomatic relationship between Pakistan and China. There were actually joint issues. China issued their own stamps in celebration of this as well. And along with all that, we've got postmarks all over the place here. One for the 100th anniversary for the discovery of insulin, and this was at the National Philatelic Bureau, as well as a postmark from Islamabad. This cover was sent on the 24th. It went, then went through the International Mail Office in Islamabad the next day on the 25th. And when I flip it over, I notice that there's even more stamps to make sure that enough postage to make it internationally from Pakistan to the United States. I've thoroughly enjoyed this mail item and I haven't even opened to see what's inside it yet. This is from Abu Abaida writing that they are a passionate collector of Pakistan, Afghanistan, India, Bangladesh, Britain, DDR, Soviet Union, Iraq, Turkey, British, India, and lastly thematic stamps such as fauna, flora, and unusuals. I regularly watch your videos and enjoy them. I'm closing some old issues of Pakistan and our neighboring country, Afghanistan, for you. I hope you like them. You have seriously spoiled me here. Look at some of these stamps. These are really great stamps. They're fantastic. Gotta love the Olympic wrestling stamps from Afghanistan. And uh, here is the set that we were just talking about, the joint issue with China, the diplomatic relations between Pakistan and China. One is the Gwadar port and the other is the Zuhai port. I don't know if I pronounced that right. Apologies if I didn't. But thank you Abu Abaidat, I really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to adding them to my collection. I've never seen an envelope this long. Like, look at it. Like, is this wider than an album page? doesn't fit this way or this way. Ooh, just barely. I'm, I'm just gonna have to frame it, I guess. This is from Enrique and Enrique wrote to us last time, if you recall the paper clips that were shaped like rhinos from the San Diego Zoo. And he writes to me saying that he got these hats for me and he thought that I might like them. He got two, one for me and one for Laura, so we can have matching hats. I know how much you like the rhino on the logo, so now you have it, so you can get the sun out of your eyes. I'm excited, I need to go to San Diego and uh, visit the zoo. Wow, these are, these are really nice. Laura! So Enrique from San Diego sent you a hat. So we got matching hats. Ooh, this is nice. It is nice. You notice the you notice the rhino on it, right? I did. Thank you. So we now have to go to the San Diego Zoo, right, Laura? Maybe. <laughs> it requires traveling. <laughs> Here's an item from Israel and it features quite a beautiful stamp on it. Check this out. This is an Epilabium hirsuli, uh, also known as the Great Willow Herb. And what immediately grabs your attention about this cover is that it's got a, another cover scanned and printed onto 
the front of this cover. So what we're looking at is, I believe, a crash cover, and we'll probably learn about that in the letter. But this was sent from Lawrence in Israel, and he writes that he is a huge fan of the videos. I do learn some new things that I didn't already know about, but I love your enthusiasm and the way you put it together. Good work. About the envelope. This is a scan of a crash cover from my exhibit. It was on board the 1970 Swiss air flight that blew up as a result of a terrorist letter bomb. I remember you mentioning crash covers in one of your videos. So yes, we've discussed crash covers in the past. I have a crash cover from I think a 1930s plane wreck. Uh, but crash covers are not a celebration of crashes and accidents. They're a form of interrupted mail. They're a documentation of a trip that went wrong. And of course, because of the nature of it being a postal item, you know where it was coming from and where it was going to. And not all crash covers have evidence of damage on it, but some of them may have a message from the Postal Service in the form of a hand stamp saying that it was involved in a certain crash or incident that prevented the item from being delivered on time. You can imagine an item such as this, as Lawrence has described, is pretty important because it is from a terrorist attack in which the attack was played out through a letter bomb. So a crash cover such as this would have been in the vicinity of the bomb that blew up and so on. So anyway, he goes on to say that you made an episode about Cinderella's and I wanted to add when a Cinderella is not a Cinderella. The Jewish National Fund, JNF or KKL, issued labels in various rates to get funds to build forests throughout Palestine. True Cinderella's. However, the British were supposed to leave the mandate as of the 15th of May 1948, but they decided they would stop handling all mail after the 25th of April 1948. So what did the local government do? They created their own service by taking the same JNF stamps and overprinting them with post. They ultimately became stamps. I'm guessing that's what the purple overprint is on each of these stamps. That's to mark that they're valid for postage. And ultimately, you've turned a Cinderella into a postage stamp, which is what we saw in the episode about Bangladesh, where their first stamps were actually Cinderella's that were upgraded to real postage stamps when the country became independent. The service was in use for the huge total of two weeks, but still interesting. Wow, this is really neat. This is something that I did not know about, Lawrence, and I'm sure many of my viewers would not have known about these JNF overprinted stamps that were labels, but then used for postage. So this is really special. I know Lawrence from Twitter, and he has a really great blog that you need to check out. I'll put that link in the video description, but he covers a number of interesting topics, and each of the blogs are really entertaining and enjoyable to read. So like I said, check them out, and thank you again, Lawrence. This is really great. Next item is from India. Tell me that this isn't the most international hobby that you can possibly get. But this one was sent from Chennai. I can tell from the postmark. And of course, we have a stamp of Gandhi for his 150th birth anniversary. And this stamp, I believe, is a definitive from the 1960s, although I could be wrong, featuring Rajendra Prasad, who was the first president of independent India. And the letter is from Siddhant, who writes to me, saying that he lives in the South Indian coastal city of Madras, discovered my YouTube channel in 2020 when he found his dad's old stamp collection in the loft of his apartment. He's 19 now and his father has handed over the reins of the philatelic hobby that he stopped pursuing many years ago and it's fair to assume that he is now in love with the hobby. He spent a good chunk of his time watching the videos and hashtag flatly vlogs to get some valuable insight into the postal history of the world. He sees stamps and covers as a true work of art, and this is a lovely way to collect art from around the world, each having its own unique story. I love the way that you put that, Sedant. Also happy to be an oarsman like you were. I row on stroke side and mostly sit stroke or two seat. He's drawn the coat of arms of his rowing club that he's part of and also has provided the club's colors which you would see on the oar. It's a really great Sedan, thank you. I used to be a bowman and I used to row in college. I wasn't very good at it. In conclusion, I just wanted to write to you to express how much I enjoy your videos and wanted to share a couple of the 1987 Canon Gun series stamps from Gibraltar with you. These are fantastic. They're really great examples of that series. I don't believe I have these yet, so I'll be adding these to my collection. I love hearing from all of you in these letters and uh, how you got involved in the hobby, as well as what you collect and enjoy. It's always fun to go through and read. 
I've got a couple more. Uh, this next one is from Poland. Now, apart from the stamps on the cover, which look really interesting, there's a couple of pictorial postmarks on here, which I imagine to be the anniversary for the Victory Day in Europe from World War II. Date the 8th of May, along with the pictorial postmark of a war-torn city, gives that away for me, but I'm sure that the 76 is referencing the 76th anniversary of it, and I don't know what the rest of that postmark says. It's in Polish. But I'm sure we'll learn more about that in the letter, which is from Matt. Matt writes to me and uh, says, First of all, I love your show. It's very educational and really fun to watch. I'm amazed by the way you tell stories behind the stamps or philately in general. Thank you very much, Matt. A few words about me. I'm a 37-year-old guy from Lublin in Poland. My story is very similar to other philatelic stories. I inherited a stamp collection from my grandfather, and for over two decades, the stock books rested calmly on the shelf. And one day, I decided to look through them. I started organizing them, sorting the stamps, and decided to fill in the missing stamps. As the collection was not complete, one thing led to another, and now I'm hooked. Absolutely a common story. I hear that all the time from stamp collectors. They inherited a collection from someone in their family or a friend, and then they get involved and they get hooked, just like you. If everything went well, this letter should arrive to you by special mail due to the anniversary of VE Day, 8th of May. So you should have two postmarks on the cover to commemorate that. And I do. Everything went well, Matt. These are great. And Matt sent me a number of stamps and postcards uh, from his area, as well as items that he really likes and themes that he collects. One of the stamps that he's pointed out as his favorite stamp of all time is this cat, because it's known as the Laugh Out Loud Cat, I suppose. It's a pretty fun stamp. And he's also got, like I said, a postcard from Lublin at night as well as during the day. Interesting thing about Lublin is that I really didn't know about the city. Of course, Matt's now writing about it, but I had heard about it a few weeks ago on the news where they had built this portal between Lublin and a city in Lithuania. And this portal is a live video stream connecting the two cities where people can just go up and wave to each other and communicate to each other as if it's like a real sci-fi portal between two worlds. Here in this case, it's connecting two cities, which I thought was really interesting. And now I've got a postcard or a few postcards from Lublin uh, and a letter from Matt. So this is great. Okay, the final item is actually from New Jersey, not too far away from me. This is sent to me by Jack, uh, who has a podcast on numismatics, coin collecting, and is been venturing into the world of philately, and I believe is starting a YouTube channel very soon. So let's check it out. Jack writes to me saying, Graham, I hope you're well. Back in January, I asked a few people on Twitter, including yourself, what stamp or stamps they'd like to see on canvas print. I was especially curious to see what you would reply with since your room redesign with the canvas stamp art was my inspiration to start my own prints. I suppose I'm following a trend here. I wouldn't have thought about collecting stamps without watching your channel. And I'm happy to say that the six cent rhino in green that you mentioned on Twitter is enclosed. Wow, I'm hoping to make a video on how to make these prints once I get my channel up and running. The goal is to have the channel up as soon as possible. I will leave a link in the video description to your YouTube channel, Jack, once it is up and running so that everyone can check it out and subscribe. I could say with absolute certainty that your creative videos and dedication to philately inspires others and drives them to explore stamps be it on social media or other formats. As one of those people you've inspired, I can't thank you enough. This is gonna to be too cool. Oh, look at that. I'll put it down here for a second. If you are a viewer of this channel, you'll know that this is Jackson the Rhino I spoke about. Jackson in a previous video and uh, actually I spoke about it yeah, briefly in an episode about rhinos and rhino conservation This is stunning. It's my favorite stamp of all time 
It's a North Borneo Six Sense stamp from 1909, and uh, this is brilliant. I've got to, I'm gonna put it on. Well, I know exactly where this is going. Wow, Jack, I cannot thank you enough. Jackson is now part of the room and it is perfect. I cannot wait to see your video on how you create these canvases and I'm sure people watching uh, will also be very eager to have a canvas such as this one in their homes. So I will put a link to your YouTube channel, your upcoming YouTube channel once it eventually launches as well as all your current socials so that people can go ahead and follow you and check out your other blogs uh, and your website and so on. Again, can't thank you enough. I'm gonna stop the video right here because we've gone through a lot and it's getting late and I need to go and um, bake my potato. But I wanna thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and comment below. I always enjoy reading your comments. I'll see you next time. Happy exploring.